Um, I hope you're doing wonderful and thank you for joining us in the Metropolis Festival. Um, so the question that we'll be asking all of these amazing voices that we're inviting, it's about how can we imagine a sustainable or unsustainable city in the midst of the biggest pandemic, economic crash, and, and, and racial revolution that we're going through, not only in America, but I will say pretty much throughout the world? It's a great question. It's a big question. Um, and it is a, it's, it's a fascinating time to be on this planet because of what you're describing, this intersection of a global pandemic with um, a rise in a global discourse around race and culture, um, fo particularly following the killing of George Floyd. And we have made clear the pressures of a changing climate. And these phenomena are compounding each other and requiring a revolution in, in design and in architecture. And, you know, they, we've seen moments like this before, you know, after 9-11, the way we designed completely changed, the way we, you know, traveled and it, it changed everything. And even that is small in comparison to what we're going through now and what's required now. And I'm so excited to see what um, design brings to the world now that it's being asked and forced really to rethink everything. You know, we are, our design disciplines are traditions that are really rooted in ways of doing things. And as liberated as we think we are as designers about fashioning a new existence, we're really actually really restricted, um, I think, by our, our traditions in ways that we're not even conscious of. And so this is a moment where we really have to challenge ourselves to shed all of these quiet um, limits uh, that restrict what we think is possible. And um, we have to think expansively. We have to think, trans we have to transcend what we know and really put our skills as designers, as, as, as fashioners, as shapers um, to the test of, of, and, and apply it to the challenges of the world that we are living in. What, what have you seen in New York City that just, push your own uh, critical landscape practice into reimagining and almost seeing some of these utopian ideas of the city in some cases becoming reality um, right now? That's a great, that's another great question. You know, um, I live a few blocks from Central Park and, um, and I've been reflecting a lot on it uh, because it's been my lifeline, you know, in the mid 19th century, landscape architects were designing 840 acre parks in the middle of cities. And those, those parks are not just places to stroll around. Those places have be, are systems of infrastructure in times of crisis and beyond. I've seen that park become a field hospital. I've seen that park become a like mental health resort and a gym. Um, um, an office, um, it is, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's everything. It is actually everything right now. Um, and so, you know, what this moment is making me think about critical landscape practices is really that we need to scale up how we operate in the context of the city in order for uh, landscapes to to offer what we know they can and should and and have to in in for points just like this. So um, I I'm just I'm, it's making me think bigger and more bold about the role of landscape in cities. Wonderful, thank you so much, Sarah.